tell you something that happened to me the other the other week. Mm. I was uh, on my way off campus, and uh, on my way off, uh, I'm walking through the road there. Somebody yells at me, "Yo, my nigga." Mm. So now, I'm normally well, let me let me let me put it this way. I have this. Uh, thing that I've created. Basically, it's called my uh, cultural, intellectual, and spiritual lineage. Mm -hmm. And then I list all these people, mainly from the uh, Western world, North America, Central America, South America, just those folks. And not that they don't have influences. Not that they don't have influences, uh, you know, in, in, the, in Europe or in Africa or Asia, but this is listed. Keep it simple. That. And I also have influential teachers and institutions that influenced me throughout my life, and then we have living influences. Uh, the reason I put that up is because one of my influences I have listed here is uh, who was this person passed in 1978 is uh, Daniel Chappie James. Now, uh, Chappie James, uh, brother Daniel James, he. Uh, he was an Air Force general. He was the first Air Force general, military man. Um, now, the reason why I have him on things is because I was, uh, this is the early 70s, I was at a, uh, um, what you call a symposium, something, conference, whatever it is. Um, what it was, it was at the Air Force Academy in Silver Springs, um, no, in Colorado Springs, um, Colorado. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, what happened was, uh, Chappy James, or General James, he, uh, we was at, was at the at the Air Force Academy. This event was held, and he brought a bunch of us black airmen. He brought a bunch of us black airmen together uh, to just talk, just chat. And one of the things that he said was that uh, his father had told him, you know, because he was had a little problem, because he was walking down the street and somebody called him a nigger, mm -hmm. and so this father, he went to his father, and his father told him, let me tell you something. He said, if you're walking down the street and anybody call you a nigga, ignore them. He says that at some particular point in your life, what's going to happen is you're going to be in a big, shiny car, and when somebody's calling you a nigga out the street, you just roll the window up and you won't hear them. You go right past them. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of interesting. But that was my response to the young man, the young African man, mm -hmm. who called me nigga, or said, yo, my nigga. That, that, I, like I said, I was going to ignore him and keep on going, but I turned around and came up to the brother. And I said to him, I can't be your nigga. Mm -hmm. I can be your brother, but I can't be your nigga. I said, don't get me wrong. The reason why you and I, I can't be your nigga and you can't be my nigga. You can only be my brother and I can only be your brothers because to be a nigga, you have to go on through the middle passage. You know, you're in Africa and you got to go through the middle passage. <laughs> your ancestry, your lineage has to go through the middle passage. So, so in other words, uh, somebody from the Caribbean or, or South America, let's say Brazil, or, um, or of course the states when they had chattel slavery. Uh, if, if your ancestry went through that process, then, well, I guess you can be a nigga. Now, don't get me wrong. I think people get this wrong because uh, I, I think the term nigga first started like around the Civil War or whatever it was. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe it was like, this before 17, whoever, whoever. Mm -hmm. And what it really referred to is like the lowest of the low. I mean, it's like you had no power. You were powerless, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, now, since it has evolved to certain things, but what's interesting to me is that uh, there was a huge controversy about 30 years ago, whatever, years ago. And what it was, was that the older generation, you know, the civil rights era people, the, you know, the whole generation, they, they really they responded when you said nigga. They would get crazy, you know, they would go, go, go nuts. And, oh, this person called me that, da 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 da. Of course, back then, the first person to ever call you nigga was probably somebody. Else. 
as a black person, but that's all because you know we use it in different ways, you know, in terms of endearment, or whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you know when you put for a public face, you know these civil rights people, these leaders have to really come out against it. But what was interesting is that in the '70s, uh, about for about ten year period from '74 to about '84, percolating under uh, the, the, the burnt out houses of the South Bronx was this movement called uh, the Hip Hop Nation, which included uh, artists, graffiti artists, dancers, they call them break dancers, and uh, you know, your, your hip hop artists, you know, your, your rappers, people, what they call spitting, you know, verbiage. But these folks, because they were, the, the importance about the hip hop movement is that it was never mentored by a, a, a previous generation. In other words, if you're going to learn um, classical music, somebody, some master's going to teach you how to play the violin. You're going to be a great jazz musician, you're going to hang out with the older cats and they're they teaching you stuff. But hip hop didn't have any of that because basically they were abandoned. The je generation was abandoned by their elders. They were made to raise themselves. Even to a point where, if you look at all the jail and all that stuff, it, it came from because uh, Nelson Rockefeller, the governor of New York State, just wrote on a napkin about, you know, if, if you sell drugs, blah, 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 then you're going to go to jail forever. And so what did they do? They, they started to have, to have the younger kids under 18 selling drugs and then force it a whole other thing. But basically what I'm saying is that to be a nigga, you got to be the lowest. You got to come from the lowest of the low. You got to have gone through something. Mm -hmm. but, the, but but twist that around a little bit because it's only a word. It's a vibration. You see, is that those young people, those untutored young people from the South Bronx, they started to use the term nigga. But they switched it around. They made it instead of negative, they made it a positive thing because they were talking to themselves. Mm -hmm. They were using it as an term of endearment or a term of identification because they were talking to themselves in their own grouping. Mm -hmm. They didn't care about what the, well, the older people didn't care about them, so that's what they care. So, to, so, so what, what happens really is that now you got the older generation saying, oh, don't bite, call me, somebody call you a nigga, and they, and they go crazy, and then you have the young people saying, <laughs> yeah, we niggas, because look at the state where we in. If you in this state, you got to be, what else you gonna be? And if you don't want to stay in that state, then you got to, uh, you got to, you got to either switch that verbiage around to make it make sense <laughs> to you, make it positive for you, or you got to keep on being distracted or being uh, using this, this word, using this set you off and get you crazy. You know? mm -hmm. And what's interesting to me is that so I, so I was thinking about this to this brother. And I'm going like, he just don't know, but I'm going like, wait a second. Maybe, let me take it a third step. In other words, we had the negative step, then we had the young people spitting a positive vibe to it. You know, so that's confusing a bunch of people. And here I come thinking about what this brother's saying. I'm going, wait a second. Maybe I'm an ultra nigga. Because I've hung out with all the lowest of the low on the planet. I mean, think about it. Look, this comes from Mexico. You won't see this pattern in any place because Mexico used to have different markets all over the, all over the country. And each market sold a different pattern. So you're not going to find this one anymore. This weed you're not going to find. This is from Mexico. Yeah, this, this scarf here. This is an Iranian girl. This is from, this is a Persian scarf. This is from Iran. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 my pants are good. I don't know where they're they made from the U.S. This, this top here, this top here. These authors, this, this is from uh, an organization out of Cape Town, out of, out of uh, Philippi Township in Cape Town. This, this hat is, is an authentic Eastern Cape hat. You know, fact, look, 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 look. these shoes, these shoes come, these shoes come from South Africa. They are nautical shoes. This, look, this, what I wear on my ankle all the time was gifted to me from India. This comes from India. So, in a way, to be a nigga, you don't know where you're from. In fact, you 
Bishop Rahayus t- tells this joke in this movie called Watch That. He says, you know, when, 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 when the Africans they were brought over here, they were like kings and queens and they were all, uh, merchants and, 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 and people who knew about uh, uh, hus- 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 animal husbandry and agriculture. These are all the people, that's what they brought up to build America. But what's interesting is that when we got away, Richard says that, you know, we were arguing, you know, and so he says, as, as Lord says, you know, God works in materials ways. So he just said that y'all are arguing. So we just were one tribe, niggas. Since we don't know where we came from. I mean, you know, I mean, I have a story that I said my, my daddy came from, 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 from synagogue. You know, my mama came from the Gambi. That's my story. Yeah, but I, you know, and if you do a DNA, maybe I got some. Da, 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 da. My point is, I've been traveling all over the planet. Maybe I'm the ultra, the ultimate, the whatever. Because when I come back to Africa, I give you dispatch. I'm, I'm talking as a person who has been displaced from his continent, his culture. I'm a nigga. Mm. I accept that. I want to let you. Because when you talk about it, you don't talk about it like I talk about it. In fact, let me tell you a next story. Sorry to take so long this time. I was in a place called Belize. It used to be called British Honduras. You know, right, 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 right to the east of Mexico, and to the north of Guatemala. And then there Punta Gorda, this place called Punta Gorda, Belize, had this character there, this black guy. And they called him Nigga Charlie. That was everybody in Belize. I mean, everybody in Punta Gorda knew him. This is Nigga Charlie. Right? Now, he, how he got that name is because it was a film, that black exploitation film that was shown in that area way back in the 70s or whatever. It's called The Legend of Nigga Charlie. So they was watching the movie, and somebody said, Hey, that looked like Charlie. I'm talking about the guy in the movie. That sure enough it looked like a guy. You know, from, so they started calling him Nigga Charlie from the 70s. Oh, they always calling him Nigga Charlie. So, and so one time these. Southern guys, this great southern white guy was living in Belize in Punta Gorda and they started saying nigga Charlie, but they were saying it like, you know, like nigga, you know, real bad. And so Charlie took him to court. And the judge and the whole thing, all the communities there, and and the judge says, Well what's what's the problem? He says, these guys call me nigga. And then the judge says, Well, well is isn't that your name? Isn't that what everybody calls you? He says, yeah, but not the way they call it. Mm. So there's the point. It's about the vibrations. Because in that scenario, you have you have the person called a nigga that accepts it when you give it to him lovingly, no matter who in the community does it. Then you have the judge who's who's not in that world. I'm like, well, I thought that was your name. I'm yeah, he was he wasn't sorry for him. But then the point was, but these per- people were using that vibration. Against him, demeaning vibration. Yeah, demeaning vibration. Mm-hmm. It was a demeaning vibration. It wasn't a loving vibration. Mm-hmm. It wasn't accepting that. Okay, the community accepts you. And it, it was a demeaning, and that's mm-hmm. the problem. Mm-hmm. But by lineage, you can't be a nigga unless you went through the middle passage. Mm-hmm. Other than that, you just you, you just it's not in your DNA. It's like coming to Africa and learning how to play the drum. Well, you're being instructed. It's not in your DNA. Back then, when here we go, when the niggas was on, was with real niggas when they was on that 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 line, that 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 line, that, that, that chain gang line, and they were doing that rhythm. They didn't have no drum, but they were dip, deepen in, into their 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 African past, and the reason why they kept that rhythm is because it was in them from the little passage, and all those people, no matter where they came from, when they were on that chain gang, when they were tilling that field, they got that rhythm. They got that Africanness. Mm. You can call them what they were, but they were Africans. So, so, yeah, I'm a nigga, but not the way you think I'm a nigga. Mm. This nigga is about liberation. This nigga is about upliftment. This nigga is about, no, you can put your foot on my back if you think you can hold me when I stand up. I don't accept it. I don't accept it because it's a distraction. Anyway, this is, this is 
abundant dispatches from the arch director emeritus. Um, that would be me, T from the Patterson's taking a train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. Mm -hmm.